Hello everyone, True Zero Emissions here. Okay, this is just an update video to talking about charging the Zero motorcycle. Um, I've been doing a lot of experiments with charging the motorcycle with different chargers. Uh, the motorcycle comes with an onboard. So first of all, this is the 2016 Zero SR. And my understanding is that this is the fast or sport model. For this year, 2016, it has the 13, I think that means, if I understand correctly, 13 kilowatt battery, 13,000 watts, 13,000 uh, watt hours, which means if we charged it at 13,000 watts, it would take one hour to charge. It also means if we drew, um, if we were to draw 13,000 watts from that battery when it was full, it would take one hour to, to drain it all the way down. Okay. So there's different kind of chargers that can be purchased for this motorcycle, and I'm very excited to share with you what I've learned about that. So the motorcycle has an onboard charger. I've, no, I've read the power going, literally going into the charger, and it's approximately 1,300 to 1,400 watts. How much of that wattage makes it to the battery would probably be a little bit less than that, right? Because there's going to be heat and there's losses, right? But So I'll just call that approximately 1,300 or 1,400 watts. 1,300 to 1,400 watts going in from the charger underneath. Now to access that charger, this is how that's plugged in right here. And that looks like a computer plug right there. If you look at the a computer power supply, it looks the same, but this is a much thicker wire. So that's going into this, uh, I have an adapter here. Roger sells these adapters, and I do plan to buy Roger's adapter because it actually is much more, uh, I guess I could say versatile. The one I have right now, this little one, I'm running these adapters here. See this? But Roger sells one that has actually three plugs that come out of this. And the wiring is very thick, very strong, which is good. So I'm definitely going to uh, look into that for myself. Now, <clears throat> let's go back to chargers. These are Roger's chargers. If you want to learn how to get a Roger charger, just look on YouTube and look up Roger Charger. You'll see some videos on there. I think the gentleman's name is Marty. Marty rides an electric unicycle and he has links to the Telegram group. And that's a free app you use to connect with the Roger Charger community. And they, there's a lot of conversation about electric unicycles in there. I am also excited about learning more about riding electric unicycles. Actually, today I rode one for the first time uh, with some help, but I do look forward to learning more about riding those, and, and um, they're a lot of fun. So I hope I can learn to ride that better, and I'll make videos of that process as well. Okay, going back to the charging. So right now I'm just using the two outer chargers. The middle one's not... See, there's no current there. That one's on zero. What I noticed is at about 40 amps, my XT60 plug's getting quite hot, and so is my wire. That's 12 gauge wire right there. I'm gonna run a thicker wire. I'm also probably gonna go into the back plug. There's a plug in the back that can take 7,500 watts. That's five, um, if, I, if I recall correctly, we could connect up to, this is a new number, I thought it was four, right? I've heard people have told me four, but I actually have been communicating with several companies and the new number is five. I could connect up to five, and please confirm this for yourself, five Q chargers, or Delta, they're called Delta Q chargers. I think that's the name of them, Delta Q. Those are, I think those are, um, how many watts are those? Are those, a are those a thousand watts each or 5,000 watts each? No, I think they're, are they 1,500 watts? Okay, I can't remember, I apologize. I know it's five chargers, but let's see, five, let's see if I can calculate this, apologies, I'm tired right now. Let's try to do this, five times a thousand watts would be 5,000. If it is 1,500 watts per charger, Five times five is 25. That would be 2,500. Yeah, I think the chargers, the ones they were talking about, if I understood correctly, now again, please confirm this for yourself. It sounds to me like they were saying, the gentleman was telling me 
that's that's connected with these that I don't know if he's a distributor or the main company I, I, I've talked with so many people I just know that this person confirmed that I could run five of the Delta Q chargers I think they were 1500 watts each they can be connected together and all plugged into the back plug in the back there's a plug back here I don't know if you could see it here the lighting's kind of low there's a plug right here right there I think it's an Anderson plug it's not focusing my phone's not focusing very well that plug can take 7,500 watts okay it's the wires are extremely thick they're really thick wires like this like the size of my finger or my thumb right so it's a very thick wire it's like a welding cable right it's almost like looking at like these wires right here see how thick this wire is it's almost like that but not that thick but close so the whole motorcycle has thick wires like that going all over the motorcycle now that plug can take 7,500 watts now if we look at the controller underneath the seat which is this is the back side of the controller where it cools off I don't know if we call it the front or the back now this side we take the seat off there's going to be connectors there they're covered with the material you lift that cover off I, I lifted the cover off now I'm gonna, just going to say the obvious, but I'm going to say it because this is high voltage and that kind of voltage can hurt, can hurt a person, okay? So please, I'm not telling anybody to do this. I'm just sharing my experience with you. So um, I, I went ahead and connected to, the, to those two big connectors. The two biggest, thickest wires had, when the key was on, I was getting a voltage there, which was the battery voltage which was the same as the plug in the back. So I do think, I did look at my other wiring harness for my other motorcycle that's just like this, that my parts motorcycle, which is I bought for parts with no battery, but everything else, almost everything else was there. That wiring harness showed that the wires that connect to the controller, uh, to the controller, the back side of the controller, do go around and connect to the back of that, uh, that plug I just showed you. The, I think it's called the Anderson plug, but please confirm that for yourself. But that plug in the back, they do connect so i went ahead and ran some wires from there down to where this is plugging in right now temporarily see this that's just an xt60 plug but it's getting too hot i'm running about 40 amps in there right now and that's the limit for that plug okay but that did allow me to put in um i think around 4,000 watts approximately so that's, that allowed my charge time to be significantly reduced because if I just use the onboard charger, that's only giving me 1,300 to 1,400 watts. Now I'm putting an extra, in addition to that, in addition to the 1,300 to 1,400 watts, I'm putting in an extra 4,000 watts from the Roger chargers. That's only limited right now by that plug because I can't even use the third charger right now. But I would like to be able to use four of the highest power chargers this charger tonight was up to 35 amps almost 40 amps that's a lot of power imagine four of those now i added up a couple numbers here and again please confirm all this for yourself and i'm not encouraging you to do do anything with this information i'm giving you except i'm just sharing my experience with you okay because i'm very interested in what is the limit of how fast i could charge this battery i still wonder if this battery could handle level three charging i still wonder that because my calculations have indicated now level three charging the, the um i think there's a motorcycle i'm trying to think of the name of the motorcycle energica if i recall correctly energica check out that motorcycle that motorcycle can accept level three charging that motorcycle to me it just looks like it's the ultimate racing motorcycle electric motorcycle not only is it just engineered really amazingly, but it's can handle extremely fast charging, right? So um, anyone that says, oh, well, zero, just use level two charging because that's common. I don't know. I mean, yeah, there's, there's a lot of these chargers, but there's also a lot of level three chargers, and there's also a lot of Tesla chargers. The uh, Energica can charge from Tesla chargers. So to me, I think it's time for all electric motorcycles to be accessing level three charging. 
I mean, it just doesn't make sense to not future-proof the motorcycle. Future-proofing it is adding level three charging right now, or at least on the older motorcycles, allow us to adapt to that. Okay, so going back to what I'm doing now, 7,500 watts can go in the back if my, if my understanding and my calculations are correct, and I'm also sharing what has been shared with me if I understand correctly, right? So that's why I'm saying confirm this for yourself. But if I can put 7,500 watts in the back plug, and I think that's called an Anderson plug, and there's a name for that and a part number and everything, I'll make more videos of that. I just made a couple videos uh, recently, so you can also look back in the history uh, of, of recent videos that were made, and you'll see that plug back there. And I'm showing you, oh, I can actually show you, I have an extra plug right here, I can show you. And what's amazing is, I think it's called genderless, it's a genderless plug, which means there's no male or female. The plug can plug into itself. This is cut off from my extra, because uh, I have a whole extra motorcycle I have for parts that I bought with no battery, because the battery had, um, was removed from the motorcycle. I think it was not working right or something. And uh, so I took the wiring harness off of my extra mo motorcycle and I used this plug. I took the plug off and this plug actually will plug right into the one on the motorcycle. So look how thick these wires are. Do you see how thick these wires are? I don't know what gauge that is, but they're thick. Now I'm not gonna use those center two. I don't know what those do, but I know that I've plugged into these two wires alone by the way this, this connector turns on, the way that it gets hot, or is the, is the con, um, how do I say this? The way I get power to this, like to get a voltage reading, is by plugging in the onboard charger or turning the key on, one or the other. If I turn the key on though and don't use the onboard charger, the motorcycle will eventually go to sleep and then it will not let me charge the motorcycle when it's asleep. So the ideal way to charge it is to use the onboard charger, which connects, which opens up this con contactor, right? in the back and then I can charge from this and the onboard charger simultaneously. So what I'm thinking is, and I'm not saying to do this, but I calculated what is the maximum power I could put into the motorcycle at one time. There's something called a charge tank that goes on these motorcycles, right? On the zero motorcycles. If I understood the numbers correctly, that charge tank, I, if I recall correctly, it's, it can allow 6,900 watts. Those are my calculations based on multiplying 115 volts, which is the battery at full charge. I mean, that's what I'm reading on it when it's full. I don't know if that's the actual limit or that's if that's 80%, you know, like is, it, is that 80% and we're just using 80% of the battery? I don't know. I don't know if that's the whole battery, but I'm getting a voltage reading of 115 when the charger turns off. It's at 115 volts. So I multiplied 115 times if you look at that charge tank you'll see it says um uh how many amps does it say i think it says 69 amps is that correct is it 69 amps uh, sometimes i wish i review i would i would have better reviewed this information before i started making this video look up the charge tank look at how many amps it charges at i know it's 6900 watts okay if we add 6900 watts and I don't know how many amps it is, if it's 49 amps or what the amps, I don't recall. I just know that when I multiply the amps times 100 times 115 volts, I got 6,900 watts. So if the charge tank, which is a level two, it, which is a, 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 connects to this, right? It connects to a level two J1772 plug. If the charge tank connects, can, 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 can allow 6,900 watts, which I'm, I'm approximating, that's an approximation. If it can allow that maximum power, right? If that's the maximum power the charge tank can, can do and we can simultaneously which i confirm this we can simultaneously run five 1500 watt delta q chargers in the back at the same time i added 6900 watts to 7500 watts and what do we get we get 14400 watts this is the 13 kilowatt battery that should charge this battery in less than one hour that's very good. Now here's the thing. That charger used, I saw one on the internet used for $2,000. I was told they go for $3,000 new. Okay, so the charge tank is $3,000 and I lose my storage area, right? I don't wanna lose my storage area. I like my storage area. Also, there's a lot of area in here. I'd like to do something with that space behind this. It's just empty space. Um, 
but I also don't mind dropping the, the, the onboard charger area down here. This, this, piece, this piece here drops down, is drop, lowering this and adding, adding Roger chargers in there. If I could add like four Roger chargers in there, right? That, that could give me my 14,400 watts if I wanna do that. So that's one thought I have. That's, that's one of my thoughts. So, um, so instead of buying the Delta Q chargers, which I always say this to people, if you have the money, definitely get the Delta Q chargers. Why not? Get the Delta Q chargers, get the charge tank. You can add it, uh, the, the luggage racks in the back if you want to have storage space back there. It's your choice. But, um, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. But, but what you can do is just do what works for you. For me, I mean, I like using the Roger chargers and I use the Roger chargers on my micro mobility, electric bikes, electric scooters, everything I can use it on, I use it on. So if I can use it on my electric motorcycle, I'm gonna use it on my electric motorcycle. And what I'm learning is I can use it on my electric motorcycle, right? Okay, so. As you can see, we're charging, and this is free electric vehicle charging. Isn't that nice? I think that's like an incentive for for helping promoting electric uh, electric vehicle usage. And I'll have to say, I highly recommend it. <laughs> I've been riding this motorcycle and electric vehicles and electric micro mobility for many years, and I it's a true joy. It's a true joy. But I will say this: I am also interested in possibly adding a turbine to this motorcycle to help charge it while I'm riding it. So I still need to do some tests to see if I can find where I can put power into the battery while I'm riding it so that I can find an input for that micro turbine if I end up doing that. The micro turbine might have to be carried in the back though, like, like on a trailer. But if I run a trailer, I don't want a two wheel trailer, I want a one wheel trailer, just one wheel, and then have it when I turn the motorcycle, the trailer turns. But it also has a, a way of, swivel, of moving side to side, right? So when I turn it, it can turn. That's just a thought there, because we're talking about charging. So back to numbers, 14,400 watts. That's the, that's the highest number, if, if I calculate it correctly, that we can put into the motorcycle, 14,400 all at once, okay? Now can we do the charge tank, the Delta Q chargers, right? So the charge tank is 6,900 watts or whatever power that is, whatever that is, that can be pow can be turned on while the, the five Delta Q chargers are turned on. The Delta Q chargers, whatever power they are, I was told I can do five that adds up to 7,500 watts. I was actually shown the number. I was told I can run five Delta Q chargers. I think that's the name of them. I, was, I can run five chargers that are 7,500 watts total and whatever the charge tank is that, that's a level two charge. I could run those both at the same time. Okay, so I have it in writing that I can run both of those at the same time. Now, I, of course, I don't have in writing that I'm allowed to use these chargers. I'm just doing that myself, okay? So this, and when you buy anything, it always says, use the charger we give you, use, okay, well, this is already out, not in warranty anymore. This is beyond the warranty, this motorcycle. So I'm just doing my own experimentation, but I am interested in charging the motorcycle within the power, the power uh, specifications that are recommended. That's why I'm saying these numbers. And the numbers are not bad. 14,400 watts is quite good. That's a lot of power. Now think about it. If we have a 13 kilowatt battery and the battery's at 0% charge, so it's all the way depleted, and we're at 13,000 watts, watt hours, which means if I put 13,000 watts for one hour, it'll be fully charged in one hour. Now if I put 14,400 watts in there, that's an extra 1,400 watt hours that I'm adding to that in one hour. So that reduces that one hour down by a percentage. I don't know the exact percentage right now, but I would estimate that it's probably, uh, it might reduce it by, you know, maybe five to 10 minutes or so, just, just an approximation. Um, okay, what else, what else? Uh, I have some interesting news for you about the Zero Motorcycle. Who wants to talk about battery longevity? I read, that this battery in the Zero Motorcycles, after 280,000 miles, will still have 80% capacity. And that is quite good. 80% capacity 
after 280,000 miles. That's quite good indeed. Now, my research and study beyond that, going beyond that excellent, those excellent numbers, I will say this. I have also, my research and study has also indicated that all batteries, now I'm saying all, but there's always exceptions, right? All, there, there might be an exception where it doesn't work one time or one out of a thousand or one out of a million just don't work. Okay, well that's, that's there, that is there. So I don't wanna say always, but I will say this. My research and study indicate, and we could say that, we could, maybe we can say it this way, almost, almost all the time, right? It's a very good percentage. Batteries can be rejuvenated, not just rejuvenated, but more importantly, can sustain their full capacity their, to, to, uh, to continue to maintain a full capacity uh, over time. Isn't that wonderful? So Study G Batteries, that's a company that's public. There's a lot of people that do this privately. And there's a lot of people that do it with chargers and they don't even talk about it. You know, they, they just do it. It's built into the charger and it's just known as being a good quality charger. Um, an example of that, and this is just my own personal thoughts because no one's ever told me this, is uh, a company called, um, they, well, I th let me see. I think it's called FMA Direct. I don't know if they got bought out though. But they, they make a, a charger called the Cell, the Cell Pro Power Lab 8, and they may, be, may have made some newer models of that. But that charger, they were many years ago, they were charging batteries so fast for the remote control industry uh, airplane, remote control airplane, remote control buggies, 8 scale, 10 scale, all, the, all those things, remote control airplanes, helicopters. And um, they were charging batteries in like 5 to 10 minutes less battery degradation with fast charging. I couldn't understand what, what they were saying when I was being taught this by the engineers, right? I, I didn't relate to it. I, di I didn't know what they meant. But now, years later that I've been reading about batteries and how they work, from many, many different perspectives, many points of view, not just one point of view, right? We have to look at every point of view we can find, especially when the research uh, goes beyond the confines of what we're being told in the mainstream. Maybe like on Google, if we just do a Google search, you know, like what's the majority of what we're finding, right? Like, like for example, I haven't looked this up in a long time on Google, but I, if you, if there was a time if you looked up on there and said, does fast charging degrade the battery? That was just, yes, it does. Everybody would say, yes, 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 it does. And here's the, the, here's the data, here's the videos. You could see it crystallizing the cells really fast. Well, now there's so much research, if you, if you look into it deeply, especially with G batteries, there's so much research showing that um, there's ways to not just rejuvenate batteries of all different chemistries, right? Could be lithium, lead acid, uh, just all, many different kind of batteries. And, and it, again, it's not 100% of the time, but it's a very high percentage of batteries that can, that can be rejuvenated. I do also want to say be very careful if, if you're experimenting with batteries. And I'm going to say this, I'm going to make a video about this. There's a burn center in West Hills in California, in West Hills, I think it's called West Hills. It's called the Grossman Burn Center, Grossman Burn Center, okay? Um, if you get a burn from a battery or a bad burn, that's the place to go, the Grossman Burn Center. So please go there, please keep that number close by you. Uh, I had a third degree burn on my thumb. They took care of it. And look, you can't even see the, you can't even see it anymore. You can't even see, well, maybe you can see a little bit, but it was, this right here was third degree burn. Okay. Like, um, I don't know if it was like two years ago and I have, everything's fine. My hand's great. They took care of me there. They took care of Jay Leno. That's what I was told. They took care of Jay Leno. I was told that. So, uh. Anyway, if you get burned by your battery, by your lithium battery or anything, even any, any kind of burn, that's the place to go, okay? Grossman Burn Center, they said people are always getting burned by the batteries, the lithium batteries, and, you know, because they work on them themselves, right? I learned do not work on a battery if you're tired. <laughs> that's how I got burned. I was very tired and I made a mistake. So uh, I won't do that again. Um, and a lot of people get burned when they're trying to get the battery outside and get it, not let it burn their place down. That's what I did. I picked up the battery when it was burning and that's how I got hurt because I didn't want to let it catch fire, catch fire on the place, right? 
on, on, on where I live. So I took it out, I picked it up and, and prevented it from burning anything else, but it burned me. Anyway, um, so the Grossman Burn Center took care of me, and I recommend them to take care of anybody that has that needs help in that area. So going back to the uh, the motorcycle, yeah, the plug's quite hot. It's an XT60. Roger has switched over to the XT90 plug now, which the number is the minimum continue. It's the continuous amperage. So XT60 should be able to take 60 continuous amps. As I said, I'm putting 40 through it, and it's pretty hot. So. Uh, I'm going to start using XT90 plugs for everything. I'm going to switch over to that. And um, I'm also going to plan to use this for the chargers. I'd like to plug all the Roger chargers. So I'm going to go XT90 out of the Roger charger and then into this plug. And then this will go into the motorcycle. And that's where I'm going to pump in. Um, well, that is, is made to be able to take 7,500 watts through the back. And I have to make a decision if, because here's the thing I want to say. That back plug is made to take 7,500 watts. This plug right here, okay? 7,500 watts up to that. That's five Delta Q chargers at 1,500 watts each. And please confirm all those numbers for yourself. Um, a lot of people were telling me four chargers was the maximum, but when, they, I, they, when the person I was speaking to actually looked into it and I asked them, what is the maximum number of chargers and the maximum power? Those two questions, number of chargers and the maximum power, wattage, right? Watt hours that I can put into that back plug right here, this plug. They found out very quickly within 24 hours or at least within 48 hours and got right back to me and said, it's 7,500 watts and it's five Delta Q 1500 watt chargers. Now I think that's the name of the charger. I've been, I could be getting some information mixed up on the name, but I know it's 1500 watts each, watts each and five times 15, if I recall correctly, is 7,500 watts. I know 7,500 for sure is the number, okay? Now, we're, now, so we have this plug goes up, and connects, if I, recall, connect, if I recall correctly, connects to the, the um, a couple of those wires come up here and connect up here to the, to the, uh, um, to the uh, controller, the motor controller, and then go back up toward the battery. And there's wires going all over here, right? So it's not that easy to trace where everything goes. But if I understood correctly, that's where the wires go. They go from here and they go up to the back of the controller and then they go up to the um, uh, up to the battery. Now, if I run a charge tank, if I run a charge tank, that charge tank, I think that connects to the back of the controller, but I don't know because I saw some people connecting those on their zero motorcycles. There's videos on YouTube of that, so look that up and see where those connect get connected. It seemed to me like they when they take the tank off or this tank area off and you take the seat off, it looked like they were connecting them over here to the, the controller. And I don't think they were going to anything else down there, but they may have. They may have been going down in, toward the battery. I just didn't see any space to really get down there. So that's just my thoughts. But I was speaking with someone that knows a lot about electronics that was explaining to me that I could easily unbolt this battery, put a, a, a jack underneath there, unbolt the battery and drop the battery down and then be able to look up there a little bit easier because it's really hard to see in there with all the, everything's so compact. So, what else? Okay, so I'm thinking, definitely 7,500 watts in this plug. I may try going towards 14,400 watts. I may try that. So let's calculate that. If the chargers can do 4,000 watts each, four and four is eight, eight and eight is 16. So four chargers, four of the, the 4,000 watts. Well, let's try three, three times four. Wait, am I saying that right? Yeah, 3,000. So the, if, the, if the chargers are 4,000 watts each, four and four is eight, eight and eight is 16. But if I do, if I run the chargers not at full capacity, let's say I run the chargers at 3,000 watts each. Three and three, six, six and six is 12. That's 12,000 watts. 
Well, maybe I could run them at like 3,500 watts each, right? That's 1,400 watts. So that's, uh, sorry, 14,000 watts. That's 14,000 watts. And that's still 400 watts below the limit, right? The, I'll call it a theoretical limit, even though it's, it seems like it's an actual limit. Um, but then here's another question that I, I need to clarify. Can I run the Delta Q chargers, or let me say it this way, can I run the 7,500 watts into the Anderson plug? I think that's what this is called. I'm gonna see if this has any writing on it. I just dropped it almost. Oh, there it is, Anderson Power Products. There it is. SBS 75X. That's the plug, everyone. SBS 75X. There it is. I'm really glad that I saw that right now. Okay. So, can I put 7,500 watts in this? Make sure everything stays not too, not getting hot. Then if I bump the power up, what happens if I go 8,500, 9,000, 10,000, 11,000, 12,000, 13,000, 14,000? What happens? Does this, can this handle that kind of power? First of all, I'm gonna look up what the limits of this are. It's called a 75, right? That kind of sounds to me like the limit is 75 amps, but I'm not gonna make that assumption because I actually think I just read somewhere that this is like a 110 amp plug, like it can handle 110 amps continuous. But what would 110 amps be in terms of wattage, right? How many watts would that be? So we'd have to calculate that. We can say 110 times, uh, well, I would multiply it times 115, which is the Full battery, uh, the full battery power when it's full. That may not be the correct way to do that. It might be multiplying it times the nominal voltage. I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I usually just go with the full voltage, right? Because when it's full, well, by the time the battery gets full, it's already pulling back on the amperage. The charger will, will cut back on the amps. Let's see where the battery's at right now. Oh, it's at 94%. 63 miles. Now that's pretty amazing because once it's full, those miles will be over 100. It'll go over 100 miles range. It's usually at like 115 or so. So I'm really surprised that that, six, that last 6%, if that actually gives me an extra like 40 miles. That's kind of amazing, isn't it? Wow. Now for some reason my imagination goes to remembering some of the research I've done some of the findings and conclusions, at least thus far, that uh, I've, I've learned is that there's a difference between when a magnet passes a coil, when you're char using it as a battery charger, there's a difference between when a magnet passes a coil close, close enough to cause that where the magnet slows down when it gets close to the coil, right? Especially if there's an iron core, a ferrous iron core, versus when it's far enough away that it almost has no effect on it, right? So one of my thoughts is, oh, and there's also a difference between charging a battery, right, that's empty versus keeping a battery charged. Now, when I say that, I'm referring to something specific. I, I think, I don't know if I can refer to two instances, but I'm gonna, one instance is, let's say I'm using that battery. I'm, I'm drawing, I'm using a battery to power a circuit. If I'm using a battery to power a circuit, what's the difference between charging that battery from 25% remaining capacity versus if it's already at 100% and I just want to keep it charged at 100%, right? I'm just going to share with you what my imagination wants to look at right now while I'm talking to you. It wants me to look at these two things I'm sharing with you right now. One is 
In both instances, we're going to be using the same battery that powers the circuit, and we're going to charge the same battery that's powering the circuit. Okay. And the two different ways to keep that, to ch the two different ways to charge the battery in this instance is one from being very depleted, very low, and then start to charge it. That versus keeping it fully charged. Okay, what's the difference between those two? I don't know. I don't know what the difference is, but I'm interested in what the difference is. That's what I'm talking about. I'm thinking about it, okay? I'm thinking about it. Now, the other thing, the other test I'd like to do is, what ha what's the difference between a magnet being close to the coils when it passes the coils and it's really hard to move past the coils with a ferrous iron core, right? Which means the magnet wants to stick to the coil, it wants to stay there, it wants to stop. Versus when it's far enough away from the coils that it doesn't even slow the magnet down that much, right? It doesn't slow down the rotor that much. And I'm talking about if we just imagine adding a generator to this motorcycle, right? And we're spinning that generator. But imagine that the coils and the magnets are far enough away that it's not actually slowing down the rotor. What does that do? What can I do with that energy? Can I keep the battery fully charged? Now, maybe it can't charge the battery from being empty, like if it's at 25% and I'm riding the motorcycle. Maybe it can't charge the, motor, the battery up, but, but can it keep it fully charged? That's a question I have. See, these are some tests I would like to do, and I would, uh, now you can, you're welcome to do them too, and please share your, your findings if you do the test. And we all may get different uh, results, but what's fun is when we find something that we weren't looking for. So if that happens to you, let's say you're not even looking for this, for something that happens, but you notice something happens that you weren't even thinking about, share those results and findings too, right? Let's keep moving this forward. Let's, let's elevate humanity to the greatest degrees of efficiency, right? The greatest degrees of efficiency in all regards. Yes. Okay. Uh, and also true zero emissions. How do we keep moving towards uh, true zero emissions, right? Okay, so we're at... Oh, the batteries are at one... Oh, it looks like it's almost full. Well, it says 96%. And I do believe that. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, there it is. 65 miles. 96%. Okay, I am noticing that the chargers... Oh, that one turned off. This charger turned off. This charger's not charging anymore. This charger stopped charging. This one's still charging. That's still going at 8 amps. That's probably because it's getting close to full. Let's see if I can turn that up. No, I turned the power all the way up and it won't go past 8 amps. That won't go past 8 amps. Okay. So I think because it's getting close to full, that charger just turned off. I mean, it just stopped putting amps in, the amps turned off. And that may mean I need to turn the voltage up one more volt. I might need to bump the voltage up. I can do that right now. Let's go ahead and do that and see if it changes anything. Oh, I need the screwdriver. This one has a dial, but it's presets. It's all presets. Okay, so I'll leave that one for now. I'll just turn the current off on this. Yeah, that one requires a small screwdriver to turn. Okay, so yeah, I am, yes. Yeah, so I am interested in range extension. And just to let you know, um, range extension is completely accepted for uh, anything electric. So 
Uh, now, when it comes to running things without end, like the universe does, uh, then there's debates and there's disagreements, and some people agree, some people disagree. It's like only nature gets to do perpetual motion, right? Uh, now, that's perpetual motion with maintenance. I, I always say that because, because anyone that makes a motor that can keep spinning, everyone knows we have to change the bearings. There's no reason to say, well, you can't have a motor that doesn't need that. You can't have a motor that, that you don't have to change the bearings on it. Okay, I don't even know what we're talking about. That's kind of, to me, it's kind of irrelevant. We just are looking for an improvement on how do we extend the range of micromobility, any kind of transportation, how do we extend the range, right? We don't need perfection, but how do we have improvement? And that's what we do, that's what we inevitably do. We all strive for improvement. Um, some people say they strive for perfection even though they know they can't achieve it. And some people say, why even try to, to have perfection? Why don't we just make improvements? We don't have to be perfectionists, right? Well, okay, so everybody has their own personal preferences when it comes to that. And my thoughts are, what are how many different ways can I make improvements to the efficiency of, for example, this motorcycle, right? And especially when it comes to efficiency of how can I extend the range of the motorcycle. Aerodynamics is one way. I think it would be neat to put like a, like a uh, plastic, I don't know if it would be like plastic or Lexan or what kind of material it would be, but some kind of like teardrop around this thing that I could see through, right? Something that would let me allow the wind to go around this. So some kind of material I can see through that would put a, like a bubble around this. I think that would be neat. Okay, everyone, well, I'm gonna wrap up this video. It's, it's 41 minutes long already. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just wrap this video up. But I did wanna share with you about the ideas about the charge tank the Delta quick chargers in the back, those can be run simultaneously, and together that adds up to uh, approximately 14,400 watts, and I'm interested in putting 14,400 watts in there with Roger chargers. Uh, the only thing I don't know is can I run the, can I run all the chargers on the motorcycle at the same time? In other words, the, the tank charger, right? 6,900 watt tank charger, 7,500 watt five Delta Q chargers, and the 1,300 watt onboard charger can all those be connected at once right because if they can that would be 14,400 watts plus 1300 or 1400 watts approximately right so that's an extra 1300 watts or 1400 watts from the onboard charger underneath so i do need to check on that um, but most to me right most relevantly and most importantly at the moment is I'm just thinking about the fact that I can put 14,400 watts in here and that's a lot of power. That's some pretty fast charging. Okay, everyone, we'll see you next time. Bye.